Yes, villagers, we have protests, looting, racism, police brutality, all of these things in plain sight of our children. What are the children thinking about all of this that they're seeing? Well, we got four tips to help make it easier for you. If you want to know exactly what to say to them, you are in the right place. If you're new to this channel, welcome to our village. If you're a returning villager, welcome as well. So let's get into it. Welcome to Garden of the Mind, where we reduce stress, improve our health and fitness, and improve our financial IQ every episode. We must believe. There is so much going on right now. Our children are watching people come together like never before. They're hearing their passion. They're seeing them protest and get together, but they probably don't exactly understand why. So as a parent, what exactly do we tell them to preserve their innocence yet not contribute to their naivety? It's a very delicate balance. Tip number one, find out what your children know. Talk to your children, find out exactly what it is that they know, see exactly how they see things, see how they're processing everything. By doing that, you get a chance to find out how they are understanding things and you get a chance to see what they are talking about on their own level. That is so important because that helps you to gauge exactly what way you are going to filter the information to them. Sometimes it's not about you solving your children's problems. Sometimes it's about you providing an outlet for them to express exactly what it is that they are seeing and what it is that they're processing. As long as you provide a stage for them to be able to express themselves, that's one of the best things that you can do as a parent. Tip number two, speak to your children on their level. After you found out exactly how they're processing things, then now you get a chance to interface with them and talk to them about things so that they can understand. If you have very young children, you have to certainly bring it down to their level. So you can ask them, how would you feel if I always provided something for your sibling and not for you? What if I bought them ice cream and did not bring you any ice cream? What if I bought them a toy and didn't bring you a toy? Get the discussion started so that they can start to empathize with other people's perspective. If they're really young, bring back the story of Cinderella and talk about how Cinderella might have felt. If they're older, you certainly want to bring the conversation up to a level that they can understand without going too low because you definitely don't want to insult them. Tip number three, teach your children about history. Now this is very important because history was written by the victors. Now a lot of the times in history the whole story is not told. We have to tell them the whole story so that they completely understand exactly how we ended up here. We didn't just pop up and end up at this moment in time. This has came from a long list of various years and a lot of different things that have happened in those years. So if you might need to take a look yourself and familiarize yourself with all of the litany of events that have brought us to this point, that would be very helpful because you're going to have to figure out a way to talk to your children in ways that they can understand. Black history is only taught in the month of February, as if that's the only time it happened. However, black history is American history. Unfortunately, as a result of history having a biased slant, then most people don't know the full struggles and contributions that black Americans have made throughout history. It further solidifies in the minds of others that Black people don't matter a whole lot if we are not mentioned inside of the entire context of history. In most schools, history is not completely reflected to include the contributions of black people in them unless we're talking about February. That's something that absolutely needs to change. Most of us that find out the true history of certain situations that are detailed in the history books, we find those things outside of the context of public school. We find them most of the times in college or some other person is directing us to specific books that we need to look at and learn from. 
These contributions should be in every book because they are history. It's not just black history, it is American history. And we have to teach it in a way that reflects all of the contributions of those who participated. Tip number four, teach your children to stand up for themselves and then those around them. It's important for our children to get a firm sense of self and the confidence that's necessary in order for them to stand up for injustice on all levels. That first has to happen with injustice towards themselves. After they have a firm foundation in doing that, then they can now stand up for the rights of other people. Teach them that it's important that it is everybody's responsibility to make this world a better place. The ability to improve the world does not rest on one particular person. It takes all of us to make the change that is necessary for all of us. We have a bonus tip for you. Bonus tip is to help your children to express themselves through the arts. So maybe they might be able to draw a picture about what's going on. Maybe they might be able to paint a painting, maybe write an essay, maybe a poem, something that really helps to get what's inside of them outside. You might even be able to create a sign for them, possibly taking them out to the protest itself. This is history that is unfolding right in front of our eyes. There is no better way to teach your children to be participants of history than right here and right now. This is by no means an exhaustive list. So if there are other things or tips that you feel should have been included in this video, please put those in the comments. Maybe we might be able to include that in a part two segment should we decide to have it. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you want to know when I post, which is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, please click on that notification bell so you'll be one of the first people to know exactly what it is that we said here. And remember, thoughts are actions, words have power, and actions have consequences. I'll see you for usually our Wealthy Wednesday portion, but we're just going to do a Wednesday show. So I'll see you there.